And here we've come to our third type of chemical reaction called the displacement reaction. Now there's different kinds of displacement reactions as we've seen before. We have what we call hydrogen displacement, metal displacement, and the halogen displacement. So this video here will be dealing with what we call hydrogen displacement. And in order to understand that a little bit better, I've drawn, I've drawn, I don't know, I've drawn, I guess that's the best way to say it, I've drawn what we call an activity series. These are the various elements in a very particular order, and I kind of ran out of space here, so I put the last two over there on the side. But they're placed in an order in such a way that the ones at the top have what we call the highest propensity. They're the most likely to donate an electron. So lithium will very easily donate electrons, so will potassium, so will barium. But as you go down the list, they're less likely to donate an electron. So what happens then when the element donates an electron? Well, if you take a look at water, H2O, if you can disassociate the water, then that will disassociate into the hydrogen ion and the, <coughs> and the um, uh, OH ion. There we go, the hydroxide ion. That's what I was looking for. And um, what happens then is if you place a metal like lithium or potassium or barium or calcium or something like that into water, then the electron can be easily removed from one of those elements, given to hydrogen, and then hydrogen can form bonds with each other and form hydrogen gas in such a way then that the remaining element that was in there will then bond with the hydroxide ion. And so here's an example of that. So if we place so a solid sodium metal into water, here's the water, so these are the two uh, reactants, that the, they will then yield a sodium hydroxide ion, uh, um, molecule, it's uh, of course an aqueous solution, and then gas will then be bubbling out of the water. So that can only happen, of course, if the hydrogen atom can obtain the electrons in order to form the bonds. Otherwise, they would stay in the liquid as a hydrogen ion, a positive hydrogen ion. So sodium is readily and willing to give those electrons to the hydrogen for this reaction to take place. And therefore, that's called a displacement reaction, because what's really happening is we're displacing hydrogen from the hydroxide ion and then in the place of the hydrogen ion, we're now putting the sodium ion in there to form a bond like that. As the sodium then donates an electron to the hydrogen, sodium then becomes Na+, so the Na+, will then uh, combine with the OH-, form a bond, and therefore it has now displaced from the water molecule the hydrogen, so leaving an OH or hydroxide ion to bond with the sodium ion. So that's a really good example of what we call a displacement reaction. Notice here that we put in sodium plus the water. Water was hydrogen plus the uh, hydroxide ion. The hydrogen gets displaced and sodium takes its place, so A takes its place. C, the hydroxide ion, is just simply what we call the spectator ion, the ion that makes this possible. It's not really part of this displacement, it just needs to be there so that hydrogen can be removed from it and sodium can take its place, so we call those spectator ions. Another example of that, a slightly different example, is when we put tin in hydrochloric acid, and again, uh, hydrochloric acid will separate hydrogen from chlorine, it's a strong acid. The hydrogen then will normally exist in the aqueous solution, therefore making the aqueous solution very acidic, but the sodium is very willing, since the sodium is here above the hydrogen, I'll just tell you in just a moment why this is so, since sodium is above the hydrogen, it will be able to donate electrons to the hydrogen, hydrogen can then bond together, form a gas and bubble out of solution, and then replacing the the hydrogen is then the tin, which now becomes tin chloride in the aqueous solution. So, so what is this activity series? What this means is that the elements at the very top are the most likely to donate electrons, and as you go down the list, they're less and less and less likely to donate electrons. But as long as you're above hydrogen, any of these elements placed into an, an aqueous solution where hydrogen can be dissociated from the element that is there, it will replace that element, take its place, form a new bond like here, sodium hydroxide or, or a tin chloride, and release the hydrogen. The hydrogen will then be able to get an electron from that ion, uh, since it was associated in water, and turn itself into gas, bubble out. Anything below that is not able to do that. For example, you put copper or mercury or silver or platinum or gold in water, water will just sit there, will not dissociate, it's not going to be able to replace the um, hydrogen atom uh, ion and it's not going to be able to 
give electrons to the hydrogen atom so it can have gas bubbling out from it. So these elements will not react in water. Anything above that will react in water. Now, of course, lead placed in water will barely, barely react, but you put lithium or potassium, barium or calcium or sodium in water, and they will readily react and make this happen very, very readily. And thus, so that's what we mean by the activity series. It simply gives you a relative position of the elements that will be able to drive out the hydrogen atom or the hydrogen ion from the water and, and give it the electrons so it can bubble out in the form of hydrogen.